engineer is a creator, an innovator, and I think also a problem solver or a troubleshooter. Analytical, inventive and pragmatic. Someone who makes things work. Curiosity, creativity and design. Systems thinking, um, problem finding and visualisation. Resourceful, uh, knowledgeable uh, and imaginative. Someone who is rigorous and creative at the same time and uh, definitely a team player. How I would describe IEP would be challenging, original and a thought-provoking programme. Interdisciplinary, uh, innovative and collaborative. Real-world skills. Activity-based learning. It's one of the most challenging, most rewarding programmes that anybody, I think, can, can take part in. Student-focused, uh, it is innovative um, and it's also fun. The IEP is unique, it's challenging and it's exciting for everyone involved. What makes the IEP unique is that it combines practical hands-on experience uh, with a classroom teaching. So the uh, scenarios reinforce what is taught in the lectures. You're working in teams, you're learning to problem solve, you have real life industrial problems. The unique feature is um, its diversity. Uh, the diversity of topics learned, uh, the wide range of applications students learn, um, and something I would like to see more of, hopefully in the future, the diversity in the students' population. It allows the students to take what they've learned in their regular courses and really apply it in real world scenarios. Being able to take a wicked real world problem and crack it open and figure out where you can make a contribution is something that you don't see in most mid-career professionals. And yet the IEP program through the first two years of the program is developing exactly that skill set, creating unique graduates with skills uh, generally considered far beyond uh, an undergraduate education. The types of people that that produces are really fit for the challenges of the modern world. The IEP is completely embedded within our programme. We have completely redesigned the entire undergraduate programme around the IEP to make sure that all the modules that we're teaching, every project that we are giving to our students is within the IEP ethos. The Triple E department has been uh, long been an advocate of problem-based learning techniques and so it's been very active in the development of the IEP from the outset, uh, working on the uh, uh, challenges and uh, developing scenarios, developing the curriculum for courses like the mathematical modelling and analysis, and setting up minors such as the connected systems and nanotechnology minors. I teach on a course called Systems Engineering, whereby the scenario weeks involve tasks that enable our students to investigate and work on problem-based learning with real-world clients and industry making use of the challenges, but really focusing in our department on the scenarios and making sure that we give a really strong weight to that part of the learning is one of the signature pieces of, of the IEP within our civil engineering programme. It's a great experience to be a PGTA in the IEP uh, because we get a lot more freedom to work on the courses, but also a lot more responsibility within the classes. Uh, we can shape the way that the course is run by discussing things with the module leader and we can also get, really get to know the students as we get to see them progress through each of the challenges through the whole term and through the whole course. It's, it allows us to form a connection with the students that we wouldn't get otherwise just in demonstrating labs and marking papers. Five days isn't a long amount of time so you're expected to be able to present something by the Friday. So I think that adds to the challenge of it, but also adds to the excitement. 
the most challenging, exciting and useful uh, aspect of the IEP all put together would be our exposure to um, real life projects where we have to develop our soft skills. The most exciting and useful aspect of the IEP has been the people I work with. The most challenging aspect of the IEP for, uh, till now has been working with people from other disciplines. The most challenging part of the IEP has actually been really explaining to the students why right from the beginning they need to deal with team working, with issues around the ethical problems that there are in engineering. We try to get students to understand the stakeholders, to try to understand more about uh, the people behind the technology. It really made me understand what it means to work with a team of radically different expertise uh, within engineering and even outside of engineering. For example, we have the 12 London hospitals working with us, Great Ormond Street Hospital, UCLH, uh, guys in St. Thomas's, and the ability for students to, re to receive real-world requirements and to investigate their work with those clients has been a dedicated and thorough challenge on both parts. One of the most challenging aspects is when the students join us and making sure that they feel part of the programme that they've signed up for. IB students are different in the sense that uh, they have the technical knowledge but also they have enough practical experience such that they are not scared of having to apply things into a context. They are more versatile, um, they are definitely better at communication skills. I think they have a stronger identity um, and uh, I think they also know um, what's their role in society. IEP students are different in that they learn to work with each other from across different disciplines and also they bring in the best of their knowledge and share that domain. Their ability to uh, work together to, to cross disciplines and come up with, with things that are a little bit different, different ways of thinking, ways that for the future hold them in really good stead in industry and for their chosen careers. And the feedback we're getting from employers is that that depth and breadth of very practical experience is providing them with the skills that they need for those demanding roles. The skills that the IEP students are getting puts them in a position to be those sort of engineering leaders of tomorrow. In the disciplines around the built environment and infrastructure, which are a major area for, for careers in the UK and internationally, we're starting to build a new community, a new way of thinking. One of the most important things about engineering education going into the future is how we get more women to be involved in engineering. Uh, in order to solve the real world problems that engineers can do, it's absolutely vital that we have real diversity in the teams that are working together. None of us can anticipate what uh, the future is going to bring and what skills our students are going to need as they go through life. I think the most important thing that we can do is to give them a broad foundation on which to build and the soft skills that they can uh, use whichever industry or profession they go into. The next step for engineering education is looking at integrated engineering on a much larger scale, looking at working with other universities and international engineering. The next big thing that would really take chemical engineering a big step forward would be the use of, of virtual reality. A problem we have in making our subject alive for the students is that we are not allowed to go on any chemical plants. So to explain to a student what they are designing when they've never seen it is very difficult. If we could use virtual reality to the extent that is now possible, we could walk them through a plant, we can show them how things work, we can simulate um, hazardous situations, etc. And I think that would make them far better engineers. The IEP is making a statement of how engineering should be taught. I believe that through UCL and UCL Engineering's prestige, we are setting a new level, if you might, of how we should be taught. <laughs>